We just got through the time of year that's rife with holidays. Christmas, Hanukkah, Yule, Kwanzaa, whatever it is you celebrate, there's lots of them. In honor of that, I'm going to be talking about a couple of plants that are holiday-ish or that you'll see this time of year, wintertime plants basically. This first plant is one you may have seen if you live in Eastern North America, though you may not have noticed it, and that's partridge berry, Michella repens. Partridge berry is in the family Rubiaceae, which also includes coffee and is known as the matter family. It grows low to the ground and has very dark, waxy, evergreen leaves, and you may be lucky to see some red berries among them. Each inflorescence or flowering structure has two small white flowers. These flowers actually fuse to form one berry. Partridge berry grows on forest floors where it receives only a little bit of sunlight or total shade. It's very popular in gardens, and some sources said that it's historically been used in an herbal tea, but I couldn't really find a reputable source for that one. Either way, its color and its penchant for producing its fruit in the winter make it a very festive wintertime plant. We've talked about a partridge, so that means we need a pear tree. Pear trees are in the genus Purus, and their fruits are also known as pears. Pears are actually a fruit type called a palm, which an apple is as well. This means that the fruit forms from the receptacle of the flower and has the seeds inside. Pears likely originated from China, but they're now found all over the world. They're popular for their delicious fruit and also as ornamentals. Unfortunately, they can also be troublesome as invasives. An example is Purus caloriana, the calorie pear. In certain parts of North America, it can hybridize with native pears. This runs the risk of pushing out the native population and completely disrupting the ecosystem. I included a study about that in the description if you'd like to learn more. Partridge berry and pear trees are both angiosperms. That means they're flowering plants that produce seeds to reproduce. This last plant, however, is not an angiosperm. It produces spores. Commonly known as ground pine or prince's pine, Lycopodium obscurum is a club moss found in North America. Now, club moss is produced by producing spores, as I mentioned, similar to ferns. Because of this, they are known as fern allies. Now, club mosses grow from a rhizome, which is a specialized stem under the ground. The leaves then come up from the ground from that rhizome. They also happen to look like tiny, adorable pine trees. For that reason, ground pine has been popular as a festive decoration in winter. But unfortunately, that's negatively impacted a lot of populations, so some states even forbid the harvesting of ground pine. So if you're looking to make some festive decorations this year, please don't use ground pine. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about some unusual plants you may have not heard of before. I hope that you're keeping warm if you're in a cold climate and taking care of yourself at this stressful time of year. Thank you so much for watching. If you could hit the subscribe and like button, that would be awesome. You can also head over to Redbubble to pick up up some merch or head over to Patreon and support me as a Patreon supporter. I will see you next time.